I don't know who you are. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. You're gonna find out soon enough. You open the door between restaurants. We don't know who or what will walk through it. Sorry, Beefy. Your desecration of condiments will not go unpunished. Things just got out of hand. I suggest you leave quickly. Well, don't worry about that. I'm fast food, motherfucker. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and uh, happy Star Wars Day, or days, or week, or month, or even your year. It just seems to be a lot of Star Wars, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that, at least as far as I'm concerned, because you know me. Ooh, breads, some butters. Mm -hmm. I saw some toys, I spent some money. I'm pretty happy. But if you're not into Star Wars, you're kind of left out in the cold this week because most of the other companies, well, hell, Hasbro themselves, the other departments, just kind of stood back and let Star Wars do its thing. Now, there's a few things to talk about because there's always a few things to talk about, but I'm just warning you ahead of time. This may be shorter and sweeter and a little bit more Star wars -ier. That's okay, I'll get this shot, get it edited, get out the door, go see Doctor Strange sometime because I haven't seen that yet. Hell, we're even digging to a few weeks back because I completely missed the announcement for Three Zeros DLX MCU Infinity Saga Iron Man Mark 50. I think I kind of got that out of order, but that's okay. You know what I'm talking about. I say this every time, and you're probably sick of hearing it, but when it comes to DLX, it's not a toy. It's a work of art. Just a beautiful meld of presence and functionality. Engineering, sculpt, paint, 3-0 leaves nothing to chance. They just pour, or at least how I interpret it once I'm playing with one of their works of art, they seem to just pour heart and soul into it. The one thing that gets me is they advertise these as 1 12th scale, and they're not. They're slightly larger than that. So if your feet are firmly planted in the 6 inch realm, this is going to stand out on your shelf. But hell, even if it was 1 12th scale, it would stand out on your shelf because this is just taking <laughs> the movie Iron Man armor and somehow magically shrinking it down and offering it to you for $100. And considering most imports run $70, $80, $90 these days, it seems like a hell of a deal. Especially with everything you get here, like a bundle of hands, blast effects, some stabby grips, an energy blade, die cast parts on the body light up eyes and chest, which is beautiful candy red and gold. And, mm, mm, mm. That all adds up to well, about $100. Plus the Mark 50 is just a slick looking armor. And uh, mm, I look down because my Hulk Buster's usually right here. But man, if you're building an armory to itself, away from your other 112 scale figures, you can't beat these. The release date is set for the end of this year. Last week I also missed Todd McFarlane's announcement that there was going to be some GameStop exclusive Spawn figures. He posted a video, and again, I don't know how I missed it, and then they went up over the weekend. And then on the 30th, there's going to be an official McFarlane day, and what do we get on that day? We're going to get these two bad boy exclusives. So we're going to be launching the clown, the bloody clown. You're going to be able to get this one in the stores, and you can order it online. And you're going to be able to do this one. It has a pre-order only. It won't be in the stores on the 30th, but they're launching it there. Let's take a look at some of the detail, right? This one based on a cool piece of artwork from Gunslinger number one comic book, record-setting comic book. Here he is. Comes with a Gatling gun on top of it. You get an extra piece if you want it. Make him look even sort of tougher. Comes with his horse. Lots of detail. And let's look at the clown. Get lots of blood, lots of cool, and look at all the cool detail on his weapons. I can't help but laugh when I see Gunslinger standing straight up on the horse. And they actually package it that way too, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's done to prevent any joint or limb warping, and I can appreciate that. That's just a 
little extra thought put into it. And the other promo shots show that he can sit pretty natural in the saddle once you do some articulation twisting and turning. McFarlane going all out with the horses though. This is the third we've seen in recent history. For Clown, it's essentially the same as the standard release, just with more blood. <laughs> Does that surprise anyone? A spawn line with blood. Now remember I said essentially, it still comes with that big honking weapon rig that mounts on his back, but they've changed the handheld weapons. Instead of the two blades, there's now a semi-familiar chainsaw sword. I liked it when we saw a variation of this with, uh, was it Todd's own design for Wonder Woman? No, that was actually from a storyline because I remember seeing art with her holding that chainsaw sword. This one's actually different, much more spawnified fits in here. I like the concept. <laughs> Clown I'll Run You $40 is available to ship on GameStop right now, while Gunslinger and Horse is $50 and should be available closer to the end of the month. Another video we saw last week that has now led to pre-orders is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover with Universal Monsters April O'Neil as Bride of Frankenstein. First try, no other takes. Ooh, I'm getting better at this damn thing. I'll admit I had my doubts and I think I even said last week that I feel like she doesn't go as hard as the other turtles when it comes to this concept, but seeing the pretty promotional pictures, yeah, I'm okay with it. It takes elements of both franchises, mixes them together, just like the rest. I mean, essentially, it's the same visual as the 1990 TMNT movie, where we see the very human April O'Neil standing next to, you know, walking, talking humanoid turtles. Or when you line up the bride next to other universal monsters, not as grotesque, not as monstrous. And the accessories here are brilliant. I mean, Frankenraff's sigh calling back to the movie, the electric rod doubling as a reporter's microphone, the little rats with sewn on ears and eyes, just everything. Mm. <laughs> I do wish there was another head option besides just neutral and slightly smiling, which I think is reuse from the TMNT 1990 movie April O'Neil figure we've already gotten. Maybe a screaming head? Something more bride, less April. I'm also interested in this newest iteration of the knees. The first one I got, it was the kind of double joint cut straight across, and they don't hold up as well as other figures that I have. It looks like the special signature edition has sold out on the NECA store, but the standard is still available for pre-order, and I think they've said it will also be available through other outlets later. But that's not all from NECA, at least on the Universal Monsters front. They also revealed the Invisible Man. And when a company says, hey, we're gonna do an Invisible Man, I never know what to expect because in my head, I, I've seen the, the practical jokes of, you know, the empty packaging and really technically, we all have an Invisible Man on the shelf right now, right? And a completely shrunk down Ant-Man and a Sue Storm and my Wonder Woman on the shelf has much space around her because her jet is there too. I think a lot of people were hoping for the smoking jacket version of the Invisible Man, but that's what variations are for. That's what re-releases are for. That's what keeps the line going. Hey, we're gonna give you one version and then we may do another one down the line. No info yet, no solicitation, but that should be soon. Little update to the Fure Planet Wave 1 Wilderness Hunter Crocker. And when I say little, I don't actually mean little. It's a little update, but it's showing just how big the figure is. I mean, that's a Mythic Legions figure. That usually has some bulk to it, some size, some height, and Crocker's bigger than that. I guess I didn't give it much thought when pre-orders went up, even though they included pictures with fancy schmancy numbers and measurements and such, but it's not until I see comparisons that it really sinks in. I'm a visual guy, and this gets me excited. This is one big healthy hunk of toy for the shelf. I'm also hoping that this means it's one step closer to production because we haven't heard a lot on that front. Because not only that, Fure is also teasing the next beast in this line and it, it may be a lion, it may be a tiger, it may be both. Is it two separate figures or is it one with interchangeable parts? I do think this verifies that the line is moving more towards original concepts than designs that could be mistaken for characters from popular properties. I feel like there's much less legal headache here. But like I said about production, showing teases and potential future figures only gets a company so far. They need to get some toy into hand because we haven't seen anything about the Samurai Turtle Spring. I'd like to see more of that too, along with Crocker. Moving into Hasbro Marvel Legends, I wanna go back and correct something I said last week. Yes, I reversed the release info for the Legacy Black Panthers. 
The regular T'Challa is the Walmart exclusive, while the Vibranium Purple Power Up Panther is the standard release. I even had to think too hard right there to get it right this time. See what happens when I get cocky and claim Robo do know? Robo rarely knows. He's usually just bleh. But in my defense, there has been a Vibranium Black Panther Walmart exclusive in the past. So it's easy to skew that way. But speaking of re-released Marvel Legends, the YouTube channel World of Walt has posted a walkthrough video of the Guardians of the Galaxy Rewind at Disney, and it's showing shirts and bendies and magnets. But right in the middle, there seems to be a Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy multi-pack. Now, I'm not sure if this was supposed to be in the video because one, we haven't heard any kind of official word on this release, and two, the brand manager doing the tour glosses right over it. We talk about the stuff on this side, the stuff under, the stuff on the other side, move on. From what I can tell, it looks to be reissues of what I consider the best versions at, when it comes to Marvel Legends of Gamora and Star-Lord and Rocket. There's a few Groots and then there's Drax. No obvious changes to the rest, but Drax seems to be kind of a mix and match. The very first release of this character that's been, oh my God, how many years now, was red pants, lighter skin tone, closed mouth. Then later, was it Guardians 2? Was blue pants, darker skin tone, open screaming mouth. This is blue pants. I'm not gonna comment on the skin tone because it may be the video, it may be the colors or whatever. It looks to be the darker skin tone, closed mouth, which is what I wanted when we got the open mouth one. But this may be harder to get because it is Disney exclusive. Well, I mean, it's not a bad thing if you're good on the Guardians, if you have all the older figures, but if you're wanting this variation or, or was hoping for some kind of multi-pack, hmm, yeah. Although, Guardians 3 is right on the horizon, right? That means new figures. So it may pay off just to wait. A few people tagged me in the tease for the Hasbro Power Rangers Lightning Collection Wild Force Blue, asking if I was gonna talk about it during the weekly, and I guess I am. Here you go. I don't know Power Rangers. To me, this is just a good looking base body with an angry shark helmet on. But from what I understand, some people are happy to see something besides Mighty Morphin. Yup. And then finally, of course, there's the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series reveals for the week. I already did a live stream recap video showing everything they showed during the Fan First Wednesday, but there's been a tasty little morsel since then. Something new on top of the new-ish. So we're just gonna run through it all again. Kicking off that Fan First live stream was the Ewok Village Princess Leia, and the Leia collection grows. I'm so happy that we're getting all these Princess Leias after photo reel. I mean, it still has its problems with the shininess, but it is all, oh, 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 huge upgrade from what we were getting a couple of years ago with the 80s style factory paints things going on. I still think I like Hoth Leia's likeness the best. This looks a little angry, but pff, still going on the shelf. Still makes me want more Ewoks though to surround her on the shelf. We need a wicket. Then Hasbro brought out the big guns, which I didn't realize were big guns at the time. Star Wars fans are so unpredictable. You know me, I like everything. Give me any and all characters, background, foreground, big name, little name, whatever. But I have seen a lot of positivity over the Figurin Dan and then the Deluxe Null and Shield. Figurin comes with the three flute type instruments. Nolan and Chill comes with the drum top things or whatever the hell, the lawnmower engine. I still don't like the deluxe pricing, but at least here they filled out the package. There's not a lot of space. And like I said during the live stream, you only need one of the deluxes. You can fill out the rest of the band with Figure and Dan. Take the extra hands, the instruments from the deluxe pack, give them to your extra Figure and Dan. So you're gonna end up with a lot of flutes laying around, but that's better than a lot of drums and a lot of extra money spent. It's a jizz lover's dream to keep that troop builder feeling going they announced the Walgreens exclusive 187th Clone Trooper. 187th Battalion, not the 187th Clone Trooper, although it feels like that sometimes. I did get a lot of comments that it should be purple, and yeah, we've seen this trooper in purple a lot, but Clone Wars Season 7 made it reddish brown. So I guess that's canon from here on out. Doesn't matter anyway, it's Walgreens. I'll never see one. That's just me reverse psychologizing those toy deities. Now I'm gonna find one. Oh, I just jinxed it, didn't I? I'm not superstitious or anything. Going back to the troop builders, there's also the New Republic security droid. And a lot of people saw this and go, why this and not this? But I'm like, we can still get this. 
I like this too. Plus I have custom plans here. My Marvel Reavers just grows. You know, I'm gonna do these customs and then the Marvel team will be like, hey, we're gonna finish the Reavers. And I'll be like, well, all that money and Tom. For Popline, there was HK87 and Luke Skywalker from Mando season two. One big name, one not so big name. Hell, I had to Google HK87, but as soon as the picture popped up, I, oh yeah, it's the droid that backed up Johnny Ringo at that fort. <laughs> I see right <laughs> Then Luke, I'm thinking they're gonna use that new base body that they were planning to use for the HasLab Rancor stretch goal. Hopefully with the changes to make it Mandalorian and not Return of the Jedi. Don't do what Bandai did, Hasbro. I shot that recap video directly after the live stream on May the 4th. So of course that night, Ewan McGregor goes on Jimmy Kimmel to debut the wandering Jedi Obi-Wan from the upcoming series. It's just how it goes. But pfft, more toys to talk about? <laughs> no. Don't. Ewan did hack on it a little bit, but I think it looks good. I mean, to us, as toy collectors, it's a good looking $25 action figure, you know? Interesting sculpt that I'll probably be more used to once we see the series, and it also gets me into the custom fodder realm in my brain. But man, I'm gonna have to get another Jedi robe, ain't I? As usual, the Hasbro robe just kind of flat, lifeless. Interesting that they pulled a couple of items out of the package, though. You can still see the tray indents, I'm guessing it, those were spoilish somehow. That's supposed to be part of the same case along with Leia and the Republic security droid and figuring Dan. That leaves some spaces open in the case. What else are we getting here soon? Did they announce another live stream for later this month? And then they will be at celebration too. So hopefully we'll see the rest of that very, very soon. Should I just stop saying that's it for this week? Because it never is probably something going up right now but if it is we'll swing back around next week if you're interested in seeing any of these pictures up close without me all <laughs> yeah i knew something but i didn't probably i'll be posting all of that along with links to pre-orders more information on the Fouche front page saturday at noon jumping back to superstitions I, I, and i may have talked about this before but does anyone have like little mantras or things they have to do every time they walk into a big box store, toy store, whatever. I've had quite a few over the years, but the only one I still do is the double check. That's where you go through the aisle looking and then you have to make another pass going even harder with the flips on the pegs and looking behind the big boxes down on the shelves. Back in the day though, when I was only collecting one line at any given time, whew, to be young again, when I was doing that, I would sneak attack. I'd hit the end of the aisle and try not to look at the section that I was actually there for. I would rustle through stuff that, well, I like looking at all toys, but what I wasn't buying at the time, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. This is what's happening. And ah! hit it before what I was actually looking for had a chance to run. <laughs> that went away because I dabble in all kinds of lines. As soon as I hit the end of the aisle, it's, oh, Transformers. I need some Power Rangers for some fodder. Any interesting wrestlers? Star Wars, Marvel Legends, Fortnite. <laughs> it's just the whole aisle now. How about planning a multi-store hunt and then after not finding anything at the first few stores, you start this. Well, I don't even know why I'm going to the next one. I'm not gonna find anything. And as you're walking through the store back to the toy aisles, <sighs> this is useless. Why? Why am I doing this? Again, some of that reverse psychologizing. Or maybe it was expectation management. I'd get back there and I'd go, well, I was right. And then off to the next store, hoping for different results. I don't do most of those things anymore because I, I get most of my stuff online. I go out every now and then, but that's more to just get out of the house. If I find something, hey, cool. If I don't, I'll just wait for my pre-orders to hit the porch. But if you enjoyed this weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Oh, another one I just remembered. Have you ever been to a store so many times that you can just walk to the end of the aisle and look down it? Yep, there's nothing new. But I better double check. That's another one of those things I don't do a lot anymore because I'm not at the stores all the time, but... I knew that I would stop at the end. It was almost for dramatic effect. <clears throat> yes. And now I shall enter. Superstitious. <laughs>